Welcome to the Business Pharmacy. I am so pleased to be here. In this episode of the Business Pharmacy, we're going to be talking, not talking, turning, we're going to be talking about turning our hobbies into a business. Um, and throughout my entrepreneurial journey, I have helped, I think it must be thousands of people turn their passions into business, um, to go on and do what they love, love what they do. So over the next hour, lovely to see you all joining. Over the next hour, I'm going to be sharing my top tips on how to get that hobby and shoehorn it into a business. And I'm also going to be joined by the brilliant Emma um, Jacqueline. Emma Jacqueline, who has basically done exactly that. I'm just going to get myself sorted here. And I've just realised, I'm just going to have to just excuse me for a moment while I just grab what I forgot, which is, yeah, I can't do any surgery with Dr. Tucker without this, can I, really? So, um, yes, Dr. Tucker is... I don't want to keep saying in the house. I always, the team laugh. It's as if I'm about to start rapping or something. Um, Emma Jacqueline, she basically has turned um, what she loved, which was um, all things sewing and a lover of lettering and a lover of stitching. And she was passionate and understanding what makes us all tick um, when it comes to glorious textiles. So this is going to be a fantastic episode of the pharmacy and as ever it is brought to us by Dell. Um, Dell who are our partners here who believe passionately in helping us do exactly this and I just couldn't do it without them so it's huge thanks to them. <music> Emma when we think about it and she is going to be joining us she turned um, this hobby this love when she was on maternity leave into a business she turned it from a side hustle into her full-time hustle in 2019 and we're going to talk to her about the fact now her husband quit his job and has joined the family business so i know that this story is going to be inspirational what i would ask is for anybody who you know we all know people don't we and we're going to talk a moment in a moment about how many people are being made redundant we all know someone who wants to turn their business turn their hobby into their business do you want to invite them on right now why don't you all you've got to do is hey sarah i think you'll find this interesting at and then put their handle in and just press send and that will notify them to come and join this because you know we all should help each other especially with it being the female founder um month you know we're here to rise you know help each other rise up help each other go and if we have a beautiful job that we love why don't you help someone else have that world to live in and by the end of today basically this session i'm going to help people understand what it takes to make sure that you've actually realized that there's a market for your business um the benefits of um you know side hustling until full hustling and the importance the key to believing in yourself the key to that um emotional and psychological um step that you've got to take which actually is the fundamental thing to making it success so don't forget to comment right now do not forget to ask your questions for myself and for emma um we've got some comments coming in dooney designs hi holly can't wait for this one as i've just started doing this very thing i'm so pleased hands and hearts company emma is a creative genius anna you're so so right um curate and create i have just quit my job to turn my hobby into a business i started it when on maternity leave now that is very very common um when we actually when i think about not in the high street and i remember all the people that used to apply um so many women you know i'm a doctor i'm a lawyer or i um had x y and z job i've had a first second third child i'm unable to get back into that job actually i don't want to do this i can't do the hours i don't want to do the hours um i want to now live my dreams and so this maternity period of time is an amazing moment for women to flip 
to actually say, right, I've done this for this part of my life. And actually, if I'm going to now become a mother, I'd actually like to take a new journey with my career. Um, so before we get into this, so according to the Office for National Statistics, OK, the most recent unemployment rate for October to December was 5.1 percent. Now, what does that mean? Well, actually, that's the highest in five years that it has ever been. It means 1.74 million people are unemployed. And that is a majority of these, as we know, hospitality industry, retail, entertainment. Um, and they have been the biggest hit by COVID. And guess what? That is a hugely traditional employer of women. Um, and that's why women are being burnt by the scenarios that we're finding ourselves in. Um, and actually what we've read when doing some research is that there are less jobs out there as well. So less jobs being advertised. Now, I don't know if that's going to be the way. So let's just keep our eyes peeled about this. But We've got more people looking for jobs and less jobs being um, uh, advertised. But on the other side, um, you've also got people who have realised that they do not want to go back to their jobs, that their jobs are not fulfilling them, that the nine to five that they used to have that used to be OK actually isn't. And we've done a, um, some research and we found that a lot of people now you know, they miss the water cooler banter. They miss actually being in the office. And a lot of businesses now aren't going to be asking you to come back to the office. So you've got a lot of, you know, this either you've fallen out of love with what you used to do or you've fallen out of love with the aspect that actually you used to like to go into the office for the camaraderie of it or for the team. Um, and so we need to create our own jobs. That's the message here. If there isn't a job that you can go after, we need to create our jo own jobs. And funny enough, I think that's what the future generations will do. So I will just remind you again, if there is someone that you know right now who is thinking about doing this, why don't you invite them on? Let's lift each other up and see if potentially this is the live that they needed to watch to start that journey. Um, because, you know, where do you begin when you turn your hobby into a business? You know, going from just doing it for fun and something that you do at the weekends, etc., etc., to actually something that needs to pay the mortgage or needs to pay the rent. Um, and actually explaining to somebody, yes, this is my job. This is what I do. However nuts it is what you do. And I, you know, I love the nuttiest of businesses. I think they're the most creative and I, oh, I just absolutely adore them. So it's really about finding your passion and purpose and your reason for being. And I know that's a big statement on this Wednesday morning, but that is what I believe. Why did I mention that I've written a book? Yes. Do what you love, love what you do. It's why I wrote that book, which you can now pre-order um, out May the 6th. And if you haven't, I, I would say it, it's quite a good read. I've heard, I've heard it's a good read. But all I'm saying is this is the thing, you know, actually, where can you live your passion and purpose? You can live it in your business. If you haven't got a business, if you know someone that wants to have a business, invite them on. Because I love seeing that moment that someone realizes, <gasps> This is my every day. You know, it's not the, you know, when you have a normal job and you can't bear it. And then at the weekend, you get to do the nice bit. It's like having that every single day. It's actually what I feel. Every single day I go, is this really my job? Is it really my job that I get to do this? So um, today is all about turning that hobby into a business. Um, just in other news, you know how I like to do my breaking news. Um, today, Rishi Sunak, the UK Chancellor of the Exchequer, will be revealing the new budget. Now, hopefully, no, um, you know, you've seen on my Instagram today, you know, what the fuck is the budget? Some of us might ask, you know, we all nod. Oh, yeah, the budget, the budget. Um, but let's just, you know, let's out it. We're in a safe environment here to be vulnerable. You know, the, the Chancellor of the Exchequer is in charge of the UK's economic and financial matters. Think of him as the financial director of the UK. 
So every year he just makes a statement to his company, which is actually the country. And he basically says how well the company, country is doing. He basically says, right, this is how we're going to plan for taxes in our company. And this is what we're going to be spending. So he's basically looking at that sort of profit and loss of our country. It's also um, going to be amazing to hear because we... Before I read, um, I saw something on the news today, someone got fired in the, I don't know, 1800s for releasing that there was going to be a penny on beer. Um, now, as in like it was a secret, you know, the budget was waiting. Now they just leak, don't they? They leak all this information. So some of the things that we know that they've leaked is that the furlough scheme is being extended, yes, until September 2021. I have got to say, though, I think that will be it. There is no way that the country can continue to afford it. So brilliant news for some of us. But it is until September um, the 2021 and self-employment income support. So the SEISS cash grants are now available to people who have become self-employed between 2019 and 20. Do you remember that wasn't the case before? So for all those business people who might have been lost their jobs, et cetera, et cetera, started a business, they were not um, able to register. And now you can. So this is great, great news. So we will keep you absolutely posted. Um, a text, uh, Atexo artist i'm so sorry if i pronounce that wrong i've just been made redundant and now i need my small business to work well you're in the right place um, wonky pickles i launched in november and officially launched in february i needed something positive to do during lockdown i don't think you're the only one and i think this was for some of us this will be the time that we found our passion and purpose in on our lives and i hope in a year's time that you're going to look back and you're going to say i wish i'd done this earlier Harrod Victoria sat here in between teaching year seven and need to stop thinking about doing this and just do it. We're going to talk about that. That is one of the biggest blockers. It is, you know, as Sahar Hashimi says um, from Coffee Republic, you know, leap and the net will catch you. Um, you know, that is the point. You have got to leap. Alison Kate Creations, I'm just starting my new business at 58 brilliant news why on earth do we think it's for just the young look at all that wisdom and experience of life that you have that will be so invaluable when you build your company my goodness a 20 year old you know will have many more issues starting a business than a 58 year old how fantastic for you rachel capalco i found out i have an opportunity to take voluntary redundancy after 14 years and I'm taking the opportunity to start my business. I'm so excited. You know what, Rachel? I'm thrilled for you. Honestly, I am. What a journey you're about to have. And the Green Door Project, that's our Kate coach, um, Coach Kate, <laughs> one of them. Uh, this is so true for so many creative people. I think in part to the education system in the UK, we are channeled into thinking creativity should be a hobby and not our careers. Coach Kate, that is so right. And so many of you are writing in to say you're starting right now due to maternity, due to furlough, due to redundancy. And I'm so glad that you found me. Um, we're at the start, honestly, of something so exciting. Now, I am predicting that a lot of you, if you are starting out, have Googled how to turn my hobby into a business. And you will not be surprised to see that you have got a few tips all written for SEO, et cetera, et cetera. And probably on someone's um, bank, um, you know, website or something, because actually they've written that to get you in and for you to buy their product. Not judging it, just saying. So there is nothing really, though, when I've Googled it and my team have Googled it, that really explores what it's really like. Because Yes, there are the practical steps and stick with Holly and Co and what we've got coming up. Do you see that little wink? I love my wink. Uh, we've got some things for you guys coming up and over the next couple of months. But there's these practical steps, which we're going to help you with. But there's also this massive thing of the emotional and mental side of this. And this is what we're going to tackle today, because really get into grips of actually, um, as I said, taking it from something I like to do or the experience of having so much joy that this couldn't possibly be commercial 
or make me money because nothing, you know, that's not what a job normally feels like. That's not what my career has felt like. It has felt like pulling teeth. This is the point. Once you actually taste what it feels like to run your own business, slightly, by the way, and I put my hand up here, I'm unemployable now. I'm totally unemployable. I couldn't go back into not doing my vision, not having every day where I basically dream and I build. Um, and so this is what you guys have got coming up. So to help explain all of the intricacies and the thoughts, you know, you can hear it from me, but actually let's hear it from someone who's a key member of this community, um, Emma Jackalone, um, because basically she has done that, exactly that. And she has every day working so super hard, don't get me wrong, but she is filled with joy um, for what she's building. Um, and again, thank you, Del, for helping me do this. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, that was my scariest bit, making sure I actually got on. So we've done that. <laughs> it's my scary bit as yes. well, because I actually don't know what to do if it doesn't work. Yes. And the team keeps telling me, but it just, anyway, you do the updates on Instagram and then you're like, oh my gosh, everything's changed. Yes. You look absolutely glorious. So oh, listen, thanks. thank you for joining us today. Where are you joining us from? Um, so I'm coming to you from my workshop, which is in my house in Gloucestershire. So. In Gloucestershire. Oh, how fantastic. And um, for anyone who doesn't know you, um, <laughs> as a key member of the community and a fan of yours, obviously, um, we lots of us do know you. What do you do? And tell me a bit about yourself. Um, okay, so I am an embroidery artist um, and I make um, artwork and um, embroidery items um, based on the things which I'm really interested in. So I like old things, I like lettering and typography. Um, I'm really interested in people and I just sew that all together into embroidered stuff. <laughs> into embroidered stuff. I, I, yeah. I'm, just, I'm so kicking myself right now because I've got one of your new face masks and I absolutely... Oh, actually. Funny got, that. Have funny you got you one? That. I've got a beautiful assistant here, which <laughs> it's my friend. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be like Coach Pace and have a head, but um, it's, it hasn't got a name, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I've got it's so glorious and everyone always comments on it um and so you um you've got a few pieces have you got any art more pieces just to bring to life what you do um well I've got um I've got medals which is what I make it I mean it's all going to a lot of what I do is um embroidered words which is all going to be back to front isn't it but um I make medals um yes. and that says amazing mum because it's Mother's Day um but yeah I sort of two things really so I kind of I'd like to work on artworks but also kind of diffusing that into like little things like this and cards and prints that I sell as well so yeah, yeah it's it really is it's it's, yeah. it's and I really want to talk to you about that and I know that the masks were nominated for product of 2020 awards mm -hmm. and the independent awards last year so we were absolutely thrilled um now before you became chief stitcher thinker, tea drinker, biscuit eater <laughs> at Emma um, Jackalone Textiles. And by the way, everyone, that is actually Emma's email signature. Um, so, you know, this is the fun that you can have when you start your business. You know, there is no more corporate titles you need to give yourself. Um, and I'd love to know if anyone else has an, a creative email signature as Emma does. But anyway, what did you do, Emma, before you started this business? Um, okay, so I, um, I've i always been, like, when I was really small, I've always been really creative, but for whatever reason, I, I didn't do anything kind of arty at all at school, at university, so I kind of did all, all the things I was supposed to do, went to university, um, studied, got to the end of it, and then didn't have a clue what to do with myself, so I ended up temping, and um, in a local company, which was like a big engineering firm, and somebody I worked for said, oh, you're very organized. You should think about project management. So that's what I did. It wasn't like, you know, I, I, I always wanted to be a project manager. I just did it because someone said, oh, you're quite good. You're quite organized. So, um, yeah, I was working in an engineering company. It was kind of aerospace and defense that I was working in. So, then, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, not 
very similar to what I'm in. Just, you know, I always talk about draw the golden thread between yeah, things, I didn't know and I'm like, it in that. <laughs> I don't know how I can. Yeah. To it was a draw for a, a decade. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I I did that for ten years, and it was fine. I didn't mind it. I mean, it was kind of. I like working with people and it's yep. kind of quite interesting but it didn't like I didn't go home and think oh wow you know like it, it was that classic job that you explained before where I had fun at the weekend and then it was back to work on Monday so um I did that for 10 years um I did quite well in it and then I had uh, my son Oscar and then it was kind of like going back to work after that it just became a lot more difficult to do the job um, yeah it involved quite a lot of traveling um and long it was hours quite just... it was quite a male dominated business Very, right yeah. In saying that. yeah yeah definitely so i'd kind of like i'd arrange my day so i'd be doing things that i had to do with other people during the daytime knowing that i could go home in the evening and do like admin and, then, and things like that and you'd get the comment walking out the office oh you're a part-timer because i was leaving on time and you just like yeah okay <laughs> so how I many can i just ask the community <laughs> how can i ask the community hands up you know just put your hand like do a hand emoji anyone else who's had the part-time comment because i'm putting my hand up yeah. and well, actually the funny thing was i was a part-timer i dropped down to it and part-time by the way was nine days in a fortnight so like i was dropping what i did a half day on a Friday and that did officially make me a part-timer so I was kind of like well I am a part-timer but okay so like it just felt like it was quite it was becoming something that was quite difficult to do as well so um then when I had um, my daughter Emily um I well I hadn't I'd started practicing like sewing a little bit and found out this thing called free motion embroidery and I just loved it I was kind of yeah, I just loved it straight away, took to it really quickly. And um, when um, when I had Emily, um, my husband, John Mark, had started his own business. So actually, um, not only was I at home all the time with two kids, but he was working all the time and in the evenings too. So I kind of just needed something to do that wasn't, wasn't looking after children yes. all the time. So in the evenings, um, I started doing free motion embroidery. And um, I shared a few pictures on, I was going to say on Instagram, but I didn't think it even existed then, but on Facebook. And a few people started saying, oh, this is really good. You should sell this. And then somebody asked to buy a picture I'd made. And basically that's kind of, that's how the moment, came. yeah, the yeah. moment that it happened. You know, I yeah. always, I always talk to people about trying to side hustle before they go full time. Is that the case for you? And was that, was that security for you before you leapt into it? Um, I mean, I guess in a set. I mean, I was, we'd moved by that point in time as well. So I didn't actually have a job anyway. But um, I suppose like being with the kids in the daytime was my job. So um, it was a side hustle in as much as we weren't relying on it at that point in time for yeah. an income. I was kind of doing it. And it was it was like my ASOS money. It was it was what I was buying bits and pieces with. Yeah. Um. Just just nice stuff. So, um. I carried on doing that kind of three or four years when the kids were up, not at school. Um. And then when my daughter Amelie um started school, I thought, well, this is it now. I've either got to go and look for a proper job again, or can I can I do this? Can I do this? Yeah. And that was the moment, was it? Because, you know, tell me about that now moment. So she goes to school mm -hmm. and you're like, right. So you have the conversation with John Mark. You say, yeah. right, I'm going to, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Did you have um, a, you know, what were those steps? And, and how did you gain the confidence to say, this is what I'm going to do? Or have you yeah. gained the confidence still? To, um, to say think, this yeah, is what I, I do. Think, yeah, I think I have now, but it, it has taken a long time. Um, so it's sort of like, I would say when Amy started school, although I was busy, so during that kind of, that period of time, it was all word of mouth. So it literally was um, people going into somebody else's house, seeing a picture on the wall, asking, and then I'd get messages like that all the time. And so I was really busy just doing kind of commission work where people were saying, oh, can you make me a picture like this? Can you make me a picture like that? And that was great, but I kind of did it for probably about a year. And then I thought, well, I'm never 
well, first of all, at some point in time, everyone's going to have a picture I've made on their wall and I'll have to move. So I'm not going to do that. But secondly, um, I'm never going to be able to go wider than this because yeah. I haven't got time to make anything I can sell. Um, you know, like the medals, sorry, oh, that kind of thing. And then um, I'm also not making, I'm not, I'm still not being creative because yeah. I'm still not making what I want to make. I'm making what people are asking each time. So um, that was just coincidentally that was about the same time when you did your first um yes independent campaign, yeah. campaign yeah. independent and you so, sent yeah am i right in saying this one yeah, of yeah. your first ever banners yeah yeah Amazing. so i did like a picture of the outside of holly and co so i sent that in and i kind of thought and, and we I fell off right, our chairs yeah <laughs> i was right in the middle of um all the Christmas present orders and I thought no I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna take a day out and I'm gonna do that because that that's the kind of thing I want to do so I did it and then I thought oh but they probably won't think it's very good and you know blah, blah, blah. and um and then it, it my, my Instagram pinged up and I was like oh my gosh so um that was really good because it wasn't just people who lived near me who were seeing things that I was mm -hmm. doing it wasn't just people I knew anymore who was seeing what I was doing, it was someone who had nothing to do with me at all. And yeah, they weren't just being nice. And I'm, at that point in time, I was kind of thinking, well, actually, people aren't just being nice saying that. Um, perhaps there is a bit more to this. And can I ask you a question? So for people listening who are thinking about doing this, did you set yourself a time? So is, is that a good, you know, so people I've interviewed before, they said, mm -hmm. right, I'm going to give myself six months. And if I have not been able to crack this in six months, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Like, I need to earn, yeah. I need to do this, mm -hmm. but I also need to have some sort of jeopardy. I need some sort of, you know, yeah. like, I don't have endless amounts of time mm -hmm. to do this. Did you do that, Emma? Well, what I did was um, I, I closed my older books and I stopped taking any commissions and I said, three months, I'm going to just try making it. I think I can make these things. I've got loads of ideas. Let's see what I can actually do. So I gave myself three months of not earning anything. And if at the end of that, I hadn't come out with very much, then um, I'd have to have a bit of a rethink. Yeah. But that's when um, I went away and just worked on things that I wanted to make. Um, things like food picture, food packaging pictures, um, talking about like creative process. And really that was kind of what propelled me forward so it felt quite counterintuitive stopping working and stopping taking any orders but I really think that for me and for the business that was the best decision I ever made because it's really what allowed me to kind of define what my brand was myself and kind of what my interests were um, and just make sure that I was working for me rather than not than what other people were saying to do because Otherwise, I was in the point, the position where I was still, do I was doing something a bit more I wanted to do, but I still wasn't doing quite what I wanted to do. So yeah. I think that was the thing I was really kind of, I was always thinking it's got to be something that I love or else I know I could go back to doing Yes, what doing what, and money. you know what, I've never heard that, Emma, you're so right. You know, if you think about it, so everyone listening here, you know, you had someone telling you what to do before mm -hmm. in your jobs. You have mm -hmm. left that job. You are mm -hmm. pursuing something else. So mm -hmm. unless you have a very good idea of what you want to do, mm -hmm. and I've been talking to some people recently, and it's like having that vision, you know, mm -hmm. creating a vision board. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, then you will start working for people. They will just be your customers. Mm -hmm. Can you do this? Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. And because that's your only income coming in, you potentially will fill your time just doing that yeah. rather than mm -hmm. actually, this is my noise. This is my 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 vibe that I'm going to put out here mm -hmm. and unless you found that or if you're going to be vanilla remember what I talk about being vanilla there is no space for vanilla no vanilla businesses unless it's a amazing new chocolate biscuit vanilla company blah 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 um you know there is no space so you've got to give your time so you don't start working for your customers mm -hmm. um you start actually inspiring your customers mm -hmm. and that is actually doing some hard graft you know, before you start going out there. And am mm. I right, Emma, in saying yeah. in those early days, and gosh, I've actually heard this so many times, 
you can get very, very busy just continually yeah. doing that and almost thinking you've got a business, but actually, actually yeah. you don't I, really I have a business, just you're that, just doing commissions. Exactly. And it was that realization that I, 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 if I carried on working that way, then that was it. I couldn't go any further. I couldn't earn yes. any more unless I charged a bit more for a picture. But essentially, I'd reached a plateau and I had to change something if I wanted to make it um, a something you were in controlling yeah something exactly. that you were controlling let's go to a few comments wise words uk i've started my own little business as a side um dish but i want it to be the main course one day <laughs> i love that saying that's so great wise words harrod um victoria emma is a celebrity to those in the know <laughs> You are. Um, Lee, um, we got Learn Well Education on my signature. I'm the director of new and exciting stuff. Ooh. I love that. <laughs> um, Alabama uh, Biscuit, what a perfect signature. Mine says, your biscuit gal. Love these signatures. Linda Sunday Best, I used to start work at 7 a.m. And when I finished my seven hour day, I had most of the 14 male colleagues use this remark um, of me being a part timer. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, Betty and Mojo, lovely to hear how you got started, Emma. Samphire Glass, it is hard. I am only just getting the confidence and the realization, this is my main job. I, it's great when someone asks my job and I say, I'm a glass artist and their jaws drop. You know, it's, <laughs> it is that wonderful moment, isn't yeah. it? Kathy Cornish, I'm in the commission trap at the moment. That's a good way of calling it, the commission yeah. trap, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. um, a question, Nali dance, uh, Dancy, um, what would you say the key to your success has been, Emma? Um, I don't, well, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't feel not successful, but I don't, I, I feel funny, like, thinking about it like that. But um, I think it's just been, like, one of the things has been, like I was saying before, about listening to people commenting on a Facebook post, it's always been about trying to listen to through Instagram, through customer feedback, anything else, what people are actually wanting and how I can feel that fit that with what I want to do. So I think, yeah, just listening to, to what people are wanting, I think. Yeah, and I, w I would add to that, actually, um, uh, Nali Dancy, I would add, it is keeping your ear to the ground mm -hmm. in terms of what the universe is saying to you, yeah. what your customers are saying to you, what your um, what the industry is saying to you, what the um, your creativity or your influence out there is saying to you. It is everything. Someone once said to me, everything you need to know, Holly, is out there. You just need to ask. And actually that is such a good point. You know, it's not to say I need to specifically know what you want me to make for my next season. You know, I, for Emma, I would like you to do house portraits. Mm -hmm. That's not what you're asking them. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's actually, isn't it, asking the community yeah. what inspires them? What yeah. do they love about that piece? Uh -huh. and, and sometimes a word can come back yeah. or a, isn't it? Or a, you, you, Emma, you cap encapsulate memories of mine. Now, mm -hmm. there is a creative brief, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's the word memories. It's mm -hmm. not giving you specifics. And yeah. I think that that is what we can do when we look at our DMs, we look, and as long as we're asking for the, all those starting out, ask, ask, ask. One of the main questions, Emma, that lots of people do get is, so what do you do? And how, and how have you found that since switching careers? Because um, I know you listen to Alex Monroe talk about this mm -hmm. in terms of you know, becoming commercial as an artist. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, and I, it's something that is definite. I mean, you you know that this has been a thing for for me personally, where I had like massive imposter syndrome because I thought I haven't even got a GCSE in art. Who am I to call myself an artist? And I became really fixated about the fact that you know, first of all, I was like, no, I'm an embroidery and an artist. And then I was like, but I'm not an artist, but am I a maker and what am I? And then I kind of like, and I think trying to know where you fit in with things, um, I, I just became really fixated and kind of got completely got in my own way because I thought, well, I'm not an artist and I can't do arty things, but I'm also, I don't know if I quite fit into this category. And then in the end, I just thought, like, what does it matter? It, it doesn't matter at all. It's just a word. And um just just go get on with it. <laughs> just yeah do it, Emma, because 
I think I think you can really be your own worst enemy and really put obstacles in your way. And and if it doesn't matter, just just if it's something you can control and take away just by thinking, do you know what? I might be a maker. I might be an embroidery artist. Call me what you like, but I'm going to sit in the corner over there and so so regardless. And yeah. that's kind of where I've got to now. But yeah, I mean, it's taken taken a while to get to that point, but. I think it's really, you know, what is it about um, potentially, again, and this is not, you know, bashing any men or anything. It's yeah. just why do women fixate in that permission Definitely, to yeah. do what they're doing anyway? Mm -hmm. um, and also the fact that I know that you, does, you, you joined a few Facebook groups, didn't you? And um, who were also you know, whatever the title was, and you sort of didn't fit in. And I've heard that before, where ceramicists have joined, um, you know, X, Y, and Z, and they've not fit in. So then they questioned whether they were a ceramicist or not. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, you know, what, what are we doing just spending too much time potentially working out whether we're allowed to fit mm -hmm. in? I mean, yeah. it's not just whether we fit in, whether yeah. we're allowed to or yeah. not. Yeah, so I'm going to call myself that. Um, yeah, I, I don't think... And I do think it's quite a female thing to do, not necessarily be fixated with what you call yourself, but just to create that uncertainty and mm. well, do I, am I allowed to do this? I don't think, you know, obviously it's a bit of a bit of a sweeping generalization, but I don't think men would do that in the same way. They wouldn't go, oh, well, I'm not sure if I can set up a business doing that because I don't really know if I can call myself. You know, it wouldn't happen. They'd just get on with yeah. it and do it. And I think... I think that's something that we've got to do. That's something really. you've got yeah. to do. Tell mm -hmm. me another thing. Um, some people feel entitled to say, oh, that's not a proper job. Or mm -hmm. how do you earn enough money to uh, support your family? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've been ever on the receiving ends of yeah. those mm -hmm. sort of things. Yeah. Oh, you have. Tell, yeah. tell me what you say, because I, I just love it when people feel that they can mm -hmm. be so personal about something. Mm -hmm. I always talk about you know, when people ask me about revenue streams and, you mm -hmm. know, well, what's your revenue? How on earth are you making money? And you just feel like saying, don't ask me the colour of my knickers. You know, what yes. is it of your business um, yeah. about this? So tell me what you say to people. Um, I probably don't say everything. I'm just kind of, like, I think, it, and again, I kind of, I think they, things like that initially really tapped into my own kind of insecurity about it. But now I just think, well, like, Firstly, I, I do think that it's really easy to forget that everyone's got their own agenda. You kind of, I think questions like that yes. really do tap into things yes. where you think, oh, who am I to call myself? It, sometimes people ask you that because they're interested and they're a bit clumsy with the way they word things. Sometimes people ask you that because they really wish they could do it and they haven't done yes. it. Um, and I think, like, I just think it's rude, so I don't really bother answering <laughs> It is, it's an, it's, it's something that people will come across and they are naysayers, you know, it is, you know, a lot of, and I think what Emma's saying here is that people do have their agendas. They have their own jealousy going on. They mm -hmm. are stuck in a job potentially they can't get out of. Mm -hmm. They wish that they could have that freedom and they can't. And maybe that's because they literally can't, or maybe they mentally would never have the balls to do it. So mm -hmm. actually that is the thing. You will always get these people, always trying to pick away and actually uh, ignite that insecurity within you that they know you have. Mm -hmm. It is actually for you to then be strong enough to actually call it out or to understand that they have an agenda, that yeah. this has actually got nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. They'd say it to the potter down the road or to the artist up the street. Mm -hmm. It's actually about them and not you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely. Your husband recently switched careers, which, by the way, I think is so a dream for a lot of people mm -hmm. to work with their partners, to work with their family members, um, and so that you can both work on taking this beautiful business to the next level. Mm -hmm. How has that felt doing that? And has that put added pressure into the business? Obviously, you've had to have a, yeah. a success enough of the mm -hmm. business to be able to afford that risk. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this, because I know it's a dream of lots and lots of people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it was uh, November 2019. Yeah. yeah, so it's been over a year now. Um, but um, I think I basically got to the point where I was so busy um, that um, I was either gonna have to like scale things back, which I didn't want to do, or take someone else on, 
switch because um, I've always been really, like one of the things I've always been really conscious of is not having massive overhead. So yeah. work from home, because I just think, well, anyway. Um, so it was going to be a bit tricky taking someone on and then having the business at home. And it, at the same time as well, he wasn't loving what he was doing. So we were kind of like, well, actually, this is another opportunity where we can change things and take it forward again. Um, and um, he'd always been really keen, you know, he'd had his own business yeah. before anyway, and was really keen to kind of be back out of the kind of traditional sort of workplace environment. So I think it was just one of the, I mean, we had gone through the figures, obviously, but it was another thing, again, where we just said, you've got to go for it or else, um, like, he's going to be stuck in a job he doesn't like very much and I'm going to be frustrated because I can't yeah. move forward. So, yeah. um, I or didn't... you're going to be employing someone else, using yeah. that salary to employ someone yeah. else. And actually, yeah. there he was. And, and isn't that the beauty, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, for all of those listening now, of what you're building. There is no right or wrong. You know, you can employ your husband, your wife, you can employ your sister, you can employ your friend, you can, do you know what I mean? These are the things, the decisions that you can make. And obviously you've got to plan it, but that's the beautiful tapestry, right, Emma, of building what you love, because yeah. you get to put all the sweets that you love into mm -hmm. one jar and it's damn hard work. Has, has the business taken that next level? Do you feel like it has been, um obviously a a good move for the business yes, definitely um in in so many different ways i mean firstly um you know our well our intention has always been that it's it's not a business that we're kind of trying to put loads of money in to sell on it's 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 a 100 percent a good life company and yeah. so we've got that kind of um that well not balanced but it, yeah. there's work and there's home and it literally is in the house and it's just kind of it's yeah. just what happens and it's is you know it's lovely because like we're both around and about with the kids all the time they kind of come in and help with things so um that's that's um that's amazing um yeah I've, it's, I've, it's, it's, <laughs> No, but, but it's just um, brilliant. And I think that that's yeah. the other thing, isn't it? That you're, you are designing this life mm -hmm. that you want to design. And mm -hmm. everybody, I was speaking to somebody yesterday for the podcast and, you know, your business is like a fingerprint. Mm -hmm. It has to be completely unique, almost by its very nature. You know, mm -hmm. the second that we see businesses literally being the same, not only on the product level, because of course we mm -hmm. disagree with that, but even from the way it's made up, you know, it's always like, you know, you are what you eat. And we always say that, don't we? Yeah. I always believe the way that we set up our businesses almost shines through mm -hmm. everything. You know, the fact it is a family business, the fact it is in your home, the fact there yeah. is, it's in the air of your house, mm -hmm. slightly comes through in your mm -hmm. brand. And, and I think this is amazing. We've got so many comments and things coming through. I've got to read them. <laughs> Kooky Wood, I'm uh, I'm in a commission trap too. Okay, so I'm gonna say lots of people. It's, it's, a, it's a common thing. It's killing yeah. my creativity mm -hmm. and making me not enjoy the process. That's a yeah. really, mm -hmm. I, I understand that. And, you know, maybe one of the things is, is to get out maybe of that. How, tell me, just let's stop on that moment. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you would say are the sort of top tips of getting out of the commission trap. Because mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming You've slightly got to keep it going, a bit like a side hustle. Yeah, but I mean, something I, else. I was quite extreme. I literally did stop everything, but I suppose right. I'd kind of, I'd kind of worked. Maybe, well, you could either do that, I suppose, by just kind of having a bit of a pot of money to tide you over during that time, um, because at, at that stage, really, it was kind of a bit of a, a bit more of a hobby rather than than a business. Um, it didn't matter, for me. you know, I wasn't relying on the money at that point in time. Um, so yeah, I think either kind of going completely cold turkey or maybe just kind of saying, right, I'm going to set myself aside a couple of days a week. So I'll just do commissions three, three days a week, or I'll take on yeah. a certain number of commissions a month. So I know that I've got some time, you know, however it works to organize it for you. But I think it does just feel so counterintuitive to stop, but you have to make that conscious decision to do it i think otherwise yeah. you, absolutely you know, no and knowing what cookie would do you know absolutely beautiful stunning and talented you know in a way 
once the commission starts not drying up or they keep asking for the same thing you know you've got to remember there's so many people wanting what's in your brain yeah and you've got to give as emma said separate it out maybe um say you will do x amount of commissions as emma says put it away and say that will keep me going for x amount of months and the books are shut mm -hmm. and that's so you shut the door and you allow yourself, give yourself permission to do the business that you build. Um, Kate G. William, this is so interesting. My signature is making the mundane marvelous since 2017. The balance between commissions and making work is quite difficult. So there's mm -hmm. another commission yeah. conversation. Linda Sunday Best, I love your art, Emma. I wear my heart patch saying warrior, not warrior this with pride and brilliant products there, Linda. Um, and so to shop, I get asked all the time. They would never ask a doctor or a teacher how they earn enough money. Um, totally. Um, and by the way, the knicker conversation, and um, that normally stops people in their tracks. You know, you know, well, you wouldn't ask me what underwear, what underwear I'm wearing, would you? And then they just sort of all get flustered. And so you can just make them feel a little awkward. Um, Baron Designs. I set up this business three years ago with my husband. And his mentality is definitely different going through the whole process. And he's pushed us on when I feel like I couldn't do it. So that's such a great thing. Yeah, I definitely think there's something in that as well. Because um, you've kind of got like a bit of a cheerleader built into the business. Because it's someone that knows you and knows that there's kind of maybe things that you want to do that you wouldn't necessarily pick up on if, if it yeah. was a colleague or an employee. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And they can, you know, in the nicest way, and it has to be the nicest way. Yeah. They can say things that other people wouldn't say. Yeah. Um, and that is actually really great. There's somebody there that will just pick up on the hard stuff or pick up mm -hmm. on an opportunity and push you to do it. We read Upcycles. I just need to stop and trying to find a label for myself and just get on with it. So yeah. here we are, Emma, <laughs> another one. <laughs> But I can be on, um, but I can be my own worst nightmare and critic. Uh, we are so hard on ourselves and that is for sure. Mm -hmm. Scratchy Cats UK, we are a husband and wife team and it's the best. I'm mm -hmm. so happy. Eco Kids where I am just starting out and lives talks like this are so inspiring. Thank you both. Well, we wish you so well, Eco uh, Kids where being truly me, such amazing advice and so inspiring. Well, I'm so, <laughs> so happy. Um, so Emma, you know, I'm totally in awe of your creativity. And ever since you <laughs> came from the Campaign Shop Independent and we opened this parcel and all of us fell off our chairs with, oh. who is this woman? <laughs> who is she? <laughs> and ever since then, you know, we've adored everything that you do. And actually a bit like a plant, um, you know, every time I sort of catch up with where you're at, you're like a plant that needs repotting. It's sort of like you keep growing that little bit more. Oh, and, you, yeah, but you do. And this is, you know, let this be, you know, I looked at the, um, with your um, uh, commission with, uh, well, tell me about that actually before we go. Mm -hmm. You've just worked with Alex Monroe. Yeah. Now, yeah. I would love to know that because about what that was, because that mm -hmm. was almost like when people say, but I don't know how to get out there. You know, do mm -hmm. I hire a PR agent or, you know, let's talk about Kooky Wood. You know, how does she get her new ideas out there? So tell me what happened with Alex Munro. Um, so it was back last summer um, and you were doing one of these um, lives with Alex. Yes, it, it was in SMESOS, wasn't it? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, so I was sewing away with that on and, oh, sorry, just kick the, kick the thing. Um, sewing along with that away in the background and, um, you were talking about collaboration and I kind of thought um, um, I noticed on Alex's Instagram feed and in the boutiques that there's a lot of embroidery and I was like well maybe you'd like to collaborate with me just kind of like I don't know it was just one of those things again like the banner thing where I thought right I'm gonna send him a letter saying maybe you'd like to collaborate with me um, but I stitched it I embroidered the message um, and put it inside a, um, a jewellery box, which which I sent off to the workshop. And I am, actually, I also embroidered into the box as well. So it, it arrived in like a bee, a honeycomb. And, uh, and is it on your Instagram, that? Um, no, 
haven't put it on actually. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I, I'm just telling you everyone, I saw yeah. what she did. And this is another tip, isn't there? Just in the way that you approach someone. Yeah. You didn't write an email. You didn't send a DM. Yeah. You took the time to mm -hmm. show that person it really matters to me that you mm -hmm. notice me, mm -hmm. but also I've put so much love in here because I respect you. And yes. this is one of the fastest ways of getting doors open, isn't it? But, mm -hmm. to, but keep going with the story. Um, so yeah, I thought, well, they, uh, they must get loads of messages like that all the time. So, um, not really, um, not really, Emma. <laughs> no, well, well not, not like that, but yeah, I don't understand that. So, so I thought, well, I can, I can say I'm like, I like doing it and I'm, I'm quite good at it, but I can, I can do it and then they can decide for themselves, can't they? So I sent it off and then I thought, well, I'm never going to hear it again, but never mind. I've just like had a play around and it was quite fun. So, so that's fine. Um, and then I was um, approached by um, them asking if I could make the like the backdrops for their Christmas campaign last Christmas. So I made like three um, three different scenes for all the jewellery to be displayed in, which were also in the boutique in Covent Garden as well. Um, yeah, so it was, it was, it was incredible. Yeah. And you know, that is taking the courage. You know, us women are very hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We get a compliment. You saw we were complimenting Emma. Someone asked her, what about her success? And did you see Emma? She shied <laughs> away from even that word. You mean mm -hmm. success? I'm not successful. That's what she basically was saying and felt mm -hmm. awkward about it. We tend to do this. The point is, is that actually you've got to fake it till you make it. And then when you do in some way make it, you've got to recognize that you are making it. Like a plant, as we say, Emma's being repotted all the time. She took the courage to go and ask Alex Munro. She, she stopped him in his tracks. That's what she did with her outreach to him. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Of course, he saw the talent and said, thank God she's contacted me and mm -hmm. gave her that commission. Look at your own businesses. See if there is that moment, that Emma and Alex moment in your own world that you could just have, you know, hold your breath and what's the worst that can happen? Because mm -hmm. exactly. what is it? He could have just said, well, he could have first, he's just said nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the worst. Yeah. Or exactly. the second worst is, thank you so much. You're the most talented woman I've ever met, but not right now. That was mm -hmm. the second worst, right? Yeah. So it mm -hmm. wasn't too bad. Exactly. And uh, you kind of, uh, catastrophe I can't say the word you just kind of imagine the worst all the time and actually if the worst is nothing happening then you kind of haven't got much to lose anyway have <laughs> you, you haven't got much <laughs> to lose right I'm going to summarize everything here but you know you're an amazing part of this creative community and you know it, you've 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 touched on so many things I'm so interested about this commission thing I'm gonna put that in my pipe and smoke that for a bit but um <laughs> because I think that that is a trap that you can get caught into and it's difficult to get out of. Um, but bless you, Emma, um, for everything, for being you. And, <laughs> and um, yeah, the community have loved it. And I'll speak to you soon. Thanks, Holly. Bye. 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 Oh, oh, oh hang on. I'm... Sorry. Oh, no. You, you, you okay. go because my little ex isn't. Oh, my gosh. Instagram updates. Gosh, it is a nightmare. But that wasn't a nightmare, was it? That was absolutely fantastic. So... What we've got, what, a few minutes. Why you need to make sure there is a market for your business. So ask the questions. Do not be shy in making sure there's a market for your business. And also benefit in side hustling. If you are furloughed at the moment, if you can side hustle, if you can go down a few days and actually have that secure income while you're creative, while you're building your brand, this is fantastic. And don't forget to share your journey. Set up the Instagram account immediately and share literally the first time you put pen to paper on your company's doodles of your logo take everyone with you they want to know about this they're excited so many people want to be you and you've had the bravery and the balls to actually go after it and then there is such an important one believe 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 in yourself who cares what they say who cares what you think you are the group that you belong to the title that you put there take inspiration from Emma and what she calls herself and do not listen to naysayers. It's about what's going on in their lives and not what you're doing. And I just want you to keep believing. A few little comments before we go. Funky Makers, a great act of craftivism. craftivism. 
totally. That was referring to Emma contacting Alex. Um, everyone's loving that Alex Monroe story. It is. Think about the way we used to get jobs with our CVs. This is how you go out and get commissions. Smiley by design, encouragement and enthusiasm is so empowering. We are made um, mad, um, made her. You have to put yourself out there. We love that. Uh, Kefi Store UK, you're an inspiration, Emma, isn't she? Keep doing you. And Silver Grey Foliage, this is the first one of these that I have joined. How uplifting. Well, Silver Grey Foliage, I hope you join. We're here every single Wednesday at 12 o'clock. Thanks to Dell. We are able to put the pharmacy live on with Dr. Um, Holly Tucker. Um, and uh, don't come to me with any proper illnesses, but if it is about your business um, and what you need from um, life to help your businesses, then I am here to help diagnose and to hopefully help you all. Um, it's been a pleasure. It is my favourite thing to do. Um, thank you all for joining me. Do keep sending in your DMs with any other questions. We have got this every single Wednesday at 12 o'clock for the whole year. We're here together. Invite your friends and thanks for watching. Lots of love. To hear inspiring stories from fellow founders, do head over to my podcast, Conversations of Inspiration.